Tommy Kissinger with Tommy's Truth Talk. Thank you for joining us again. This is going to be What is Our Inheritance? Part 2. We've been reading from the writings of Dr. Stephen Jones and his series entitled Defining Key Biblical Concepts. And last time we introduced the idea that our inheritance is way bigger than just existing on this earth and letting the time pass and then waiting to die and going to either heaven or hell. So it's something so much bigger, so larger, um, so much more grand than what gets taught in modern day Christianity. But before we get into that, if you wouldn't mind hitting the thumbs button, the like button, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And we're just excited to continue through this series. Check behind me, we do have the uh, mountains of Breckenridge. We're in Breckenridge, Colorado behind me. Just excited to be here, very thankful. It's a privilege to be up in the mountains. The mountain peaks belong to God. So let's get on into this and pick up where we left off. The biblical view. The Bible differs, for there we find that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. When completed, God pronounced all things very good. Genesis 131. The devil is a usurper, not a creator. Matter is not evil, but good. The solution is not to separate heaven from earth, but to marry the two, to bring the two together. The earth is destined to come into full agreement with the will of God. Understand that. That's hard to believe. But the earth is destined ultimately to come into full agreement with the will of God. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As heaven and earth come into unity. So Jesus taught us to pray in Matthew 6.10. And here it is. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth or in earth as it is in heaven. The goal of history and the end of all things is clearly stated in many passages, such as we see in 1 Corinthians 15, 28. When all things are subjected to him, then the son himself also will be subjected to the one who subjected all things to him so that God may be all in all. God may be all in all. This is the goal of of history and the end of all things. And many Christians have not been taught the plan of God. They've just been taught, you know, hey, I personally need to believe on Jesus so that when I die, I go to heaven and I don't go to hell. And that's all they know about God. They don't know the plan of God. They don't, they're not able to see afar off and they have not been taught about the goal of history and the end of all things. The separation between God and man is a temporary problem, not a permanent one. Oh man, let's drive that one home again. The separation between God and man is a temporary problem, not a permanent one, okay? God has subjected the creation to vanity, not willingly, but he did it in hope because he knows, According to his plan, the sons of God are going to rise to the top first, the first fruits, and then that's the guarantee for the rest of the harvest to come. The real question is whether or not we believe that God is able to win everything and become all in all. Man, this is high noon slap and leather. This is a matter of whether God is God, whether God is powerful enough. Is God able to win everything and become all in all? Most of Christianity says he's not because they kind of worship the will of man more than they worship God. They worship this thing they call free will and free moral agency, which the Bible doesn't really speak of man's will in those terms. Yes, we do have a will. It's not this 100% just autonomous free will and free moral agency. Again, we read in Hebrews 2, 8, you have put all things in subjection under his feet. 
for in subjecting all things to him, he left nothing that is not subject to him. But now we do not yet see all things subjected to him. All things will be subjected to the Son, except for the Father himself. Paul expresses this again in Colossians 1, 16 through 20. For by him all things were created, both in the heavens and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. He, Christ, is also the head of the body, the church, and he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he himself will come to have first place in everything. For it was the Father's good pleasure for all the fullness to dwell in him and through him to reconcile all things to himself, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Through him, I say, whether things on earth or things in heaven. Here we go. All things were created through him and for him. Plain, clear, simple, easy. Now. The same all things were reconciled to him by his blood. And that's the one that most Christians either don't want to admit or come to terms to or they don't understand it. It does have to be received by revelation from the Father. The same all things were reconciled to him by his blood, whether things on earth or things in heaven. Paul did not get this from Greek religious philosophy, but from Psalm 8. Six, the purpose of creation was to give everything to Jesus Christ. Will God's will and purpose be fulfilled? Is God able to do this? Is God able to do this? The Greeks taught something very different. They thought that only things in heaven, spiritual things, could be reconciled to God. Things on earth were the realm of the demiurge, the devil. But Paul lays claim to all things in both realms for Jesus Christ, in heaven and in earth, in both realms. Everything belongs to Jesus Christ. Just because men may not know how the divine plan will be accomplished is no hindrance to his ability to do it. So... In closing, we'll just ask this question again. Is God able to save all men? And I've said it this way many times concerning his love and his power. If God does not want to save everybody, then that is an indictment against his love, and he is not love. But God does want to save everyone, and he is love. Now, if God is not able to save everyone through Jesus Christ, that is an indictment against his power, and he is not all-powerful. But that's not the case, because God is able. He is able, and he has already done it through the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're just waiting for it to be played out in time. And it's not a matter of if everyone will be saved. It is a matter of what order will you come in? What order? Will you have the ears to hear? Will you believe now today? Because today is the day of salvation if you have the ears to hear it. In Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive, every man in his own order.